I love the exhibition. I think it's beautiful. I'm very happy to be included. And um, yeah, I think it is important to be here today. You know, one just to meet everyone. You know, I've been communicating with all of you for so long. Just on that level, it's, it's very nice to meet everybody. And, um, but also to see the work because, you know, it has, the show has a sense of history as well of a blending of different worlds and concepts. And so, you know, I enjoy that you can go downstairs and see the work about artwork done in the trenches during World War I. And then you have almost lineages like Ed Roth's work and then Ed Hardy's work and Philippe's work and, um, and have that kind of um, communication happening in the show that, you know, I wouldn't have any idea of if I hadn't come and seen it. So I'm enjoying that quite a bit. They're called flayed bears. And um, I had been doing a lot of sculptures of animals where they were completely covered with fur. And I was very, very bored with it. It wasn't working. And I, when I make the pattern for the linen and the faux fur, it's, you know, I buy cheap cotton, I buy muslin. And I learned long ago to very carefully label everything, you know, like a sewing pattern. So, you know, you know when you cut the pieces apart, they're very counterintuitive. So when you put it together, it looks like a map from a butcher's office, you know, of the different parts of the cow. And so I found that interesting. And so I thought, oh, I'll write the name of everything on the pattern, like the arm and the different muscles and ligaments. But my handwriting is really, really bad. So I thought maybe I'll embroider it. And then I somehow made the jump to doing organs. And so I, you know, particularly bears work because they're so iconic, you know, both as the toy and as the taxidermied animal. I mean, in English, we say stuffed animal for both. So um, I liked the idea of the vulnerability of the childhood toy with the ferociousness and the fear involved with the, the huge taxidermy trophy and wanted to play with that. Oh my god, I was so and excited. The cover also, of course. I remember getting Anne's email if it would be in, I think it was, she said, would it be inconvenient for me to be on the cover? And I thought, hell no, <laughs> go ahead, put it on the cover. I was, I was amazed. It was, I was amazed not only with just how high quality the printing was. My husband is in publishing, so... That was his first comment, was how, um, how beautiful it was and the quality of the ink and the paper. But what I also loved was just all the work, all the other work that was in here, because you know, there were some people who, you know, I had seen their work before, but other people I had never seen. And then, you know, there was the article on the um, Japanese sideshow, uh, carnival paintings and, I think it's just fascinating. Well, you know, I mean, there's something, I mean, it's what, one of the things I've noticed about all of the work in the show is there's a very high level of craftsmanship. And, you know, within my own work, I like the preciousness of the object. You know, having this beautifully made, thoughtful object like the magazine, you know, it, it, it makes it precious. It makes it something that you don't read online. You know, I can't go online and see this. And it's not like a um, fanzine where it's on, you know, bad quality paper and it gets published, you know, once a month. It's, you know, it's like a treat. You know, it's very special and it's very respectful to the artists. I mean, it, you know, it, it obviously, Anne and Julian believe in the art and they believe in the artists that are in here and they take the time to present them well and to make it valuable and, and that's something I appreciate.